The Crucible begins with an overture, including comments by Arthur Miller. The overture explains character analysis and background, including discussions of witchcraft hysteria and the founding of early America. In the introduction of The Crucible, Reverend Paris is kneeling by the side of his daughter Betty, who he had found with some other girls the previous night, dancing in the woods. Abigail Williams contends they only danced, and Betty fainted when Reverend Paris jumped out of the bushes. In the rising action, Thomas and Anne Putnam rush in, explaining that their daughter Ruth is also ailing and raising fears of suspected witchcraft. John Proctor walks in, and Abigail, with whom he had had an affair months previously, tries to woo him <laughs> back. He refuses her, which makes her furious, and she disparages Elizabeth Proctor, John's wife. John Proctor and Reverend Paris feud. Giles Corey sides with John Proctor regarding Reverend Paris's negative ministry, and Putnam jumps into the argument on the minister's side. Reverend Hale enters, and the conversation turns to witchcraft and the conjuring of evil spirits. Mrs. Putnam mentions that Tichibo can speak to the dead. Giles Corey innocently mentions that his wife loves reading and wonders if he could discuss Reverend Hale's thoughts on that. When Hale interrogates Abigail and Tichibo about their activities in the woods, they fold under the power of suggestion. Tichibo mentions that the devil has spoken to her and names some other people as well. Betty wakes up and starts naming other Salem citizens as the devil's disciples, and Abigail joins her by accusing other townspeople. At their home, Elizabeth Proctor begs John Proctor to tell the clerk that Abigail had confessed to him that their dancing in the woods involved no witchcraft. They fight about her suspicions that he still is attracted to Abigail. Mary Warren enters and gives Elizabeth a puppet she made during the day's trial. She tells Elizabeth her name was mentioned during the trial. Reverend Hale wants to talk with John and Elizabeth Proctor about their Christian beliefs. Giles Corey and Francis Nurse announce their wives have been arrested, and Elizabeth is arrested as well for trying to murder Abigail by casting a spell on her using the puppet Mary Warren gave her. Misters Proctor, Nurse, and Corey try to overturn their wives' arrests. Francis Nurse has signed testimonies from 91 people affirming they have always known the men's wives to be pious, but would not identify the people who signed the forms. Mary Warren explains that she and the girls have been faking, but then she recants under heavy interrogation and the other girls' intimidation. The climax of the crucible is when John Proctor confesses his affair with Abigail and says his wife will affirm his admission because she would never lie. She does lie, though, thinking she is saving her husband's reputation. She realizes she has condemned him to death when John admits he told the court the truth. During the falling action, John Proctor is arrested for trying to bewitch Mary Warren. Reverend Hale denounces the court. Judge Hawthorne is present at the jail, along with Deputy Governor Danforth and the Reverend Paris and Hale. Reverend Paris tells them Abigail left town with Mercy Lewis, and he fears the townspeople will riot if John Proctor, Rebecca Nurse, and Martha Corey are hanged. Deputy Governor Danforth refuses to postpone or pardon the three scheduled to hang. In the resolution, Elizabeth and John face the realization of his situation. He can either lie and confess so he can live, or die knowing he is innocent but carrying the truth to his grave. Elizabeth will not make this decision for him. Ultimately, he reluctantly agrees to sign the confession, but changes his mind when the judges want to post it on the door of the church. John Proctor rips up the confession and says he cannot shame his good name by lying, and he walks to the gallows and is hanged. <laughs>